morning. Good morning, adventurers. Oh. <laughs> that got pretty cold last night. <laughs> Holy cow. <laughs> that yeah. might be the coldest night I've ever slept. <laughs> and the longest night and the hardest night. <laughs> it's currently 28 outside and I would venture to guess it's also that in here. If you guys caught our last video, uh, you guys know that we had to uh, park our camper at an RV lot where they were working on it and getting some things done. We took that as an opportunity to downsize a little bit and rent ourselves a cute little West Valley pop top camper. Trouble was that was a really bad idea in the start of winter because it all of a sudden got really, really cold. So it was definitely in the 20s last night. We thought we could hack it and well, we survived but it was pretty rough. We survived with a sleeping bag rated for 25 degrees. This blanket, this blanket, this, this one, blanket, this one. This sheet. And of course, the most important thing, our heated blanket. If it I, wasn't for this, we might not have made it through the night. The heated blanket <laughs> is the reason we survived, I'm pretty sure. But that is a sweet hack that we are gonna be using from now on, even in our RV, we're gonna be using this heated blanket because mm -hmm. if you set it to low, it keeps you pretty toasty all night. The only downside is it's a little small for two people. So any part of your body that gets outside of the heated blanket is freezing. <laughs> so you guys know we were plugging it into our little power bank. Mm -hmm. Let's see how much power we used. We only used 50% of this battery bank with this blanket on all night. That's pretty good. That's not as bad as I thought. All right. Sadly, this blanket shuts off every four hours. It's supposed to be a safety feature, but it also means that every four hours I have to wake up and turn the dang thing back on. For me, the worst part was definitely my nose being out. I guess I just kept wiggling in the night and the blanket would fall off and it would just be freezing. <laughs> yeah, everything was warm except your nose. Yeah. All right, let's see if we can get the heck out of this bed and friggin' warm up, y'all. Yeah. <laughs> All right, somehow we got up and ready to go <laughs> but man it is not getting any warmer but the sun is maybe peeking out come on son do your thing we're not gonna let this cold stop us though we are trying to see parts of maine we have not seen before we are going to make the about three plus hour trip up the coast to bar harbor the drive up there is going to be incredible it should be super beautiful tons of awesome nature we're just gonna have to try not to freeze to death along the way i guess <laughs> oh yeah start right up <laughs> we are following Highway 1, which is like this coastal route, but it stops at all these different little towns. It's been really cool just going through them. There's a lot of little charming downtown areas. There's these cool villages that are just like carved into the land on the side of the water. The houses out here are also very sweet. A lot of them are really historic looking, but very well preserved. Oh, Lucy is treating us well though. She's a little slow. <laughs> the speed limit on this road is only like 55 miles an hour, but we've had a couple of stretches where she's bogged down to about 30, 35. Yeah, on the hills, <laughs> I feel kind of bad. Man, winter is starting to get to us you guys i mean by like 3 30 or 4 it's already like dusk sunset time and it really messes with your head it makes you feel like you got to rush and you have no more time left in the day but you actually have a ton of time you just have no more daylight it's also been such a bummer that in the mornings even though the sun does come up around 6 30 it's just been so overcast and dreary up here so yeah. you wake up in the dark your afternoon becomes dark at like four o'clock you're just in the dark all day long is what i feel like yeah. it's easy to let it uh, kind of affect your mood you know like the seasonal affective disorder <laughs> right <laughs> yeah so trying to stay positive trying to have fun and not freeze our butts off <laughs> yeah all right back on the road we're gonna save for what little daylight we have left oops <laughs> Trying to do a cool transition, it just did not work out. All right, let's try that again. Well, we've been going down this dirt road for a little while now, trying to find our uh, hip camp for the night. <laughs> I guess this is why you should always check in before darkness falls. <laughs> yeah. Okay, we're thinking this is the driveway. This takes us to our campsite or to our murder site. I don't know. Sign says hip camp. That's a good the sign. The backside, yeah, this is us. You hear what I said? It's a good sign. Oh, a good <laughs> sign because it was a sign. There's our porter potty right over there. How was it out there? <laughs> Awful. It's so cold. 
This is what That's... we have to do when we have to pee, though. You have to just go out into the cold as quick as possible. It's 27 currently. It's going to get down to 24, though. Yay. But we've tweaked our strategy a bit. We actually have two electric blankets now. One for me, one for her. Since we only <laughs> used half our battery, we should be good all night. We also ended up stuffing the sleeping bag in the window back here to provide a little, you know, insulation from the cold, from the window. So, we'll see, I don't know. Yeah. But we're just trying to like have fun with it, right? This is just fun, we're cozy enough, we're camping. <laughs> oh, it's great. No, this is a definitely a huge mistake, you guys. <laughs> this is a mistake and I told Eric earlier, I will never in my life book something without heat in the winter. We keep saying, we just have to think like, uh, you know, Leonardo DiCaprio and the Revenant. Look what he went through. I know, we just watched that the other night. Yeah, if he can handle that, we can handle this. <laughs> it's true, we can. We're not gonna die, obviously, but it's cold. And now I understand why half of the things in Maine close down mid-October, yeah. because once it hits November, December, you don't want to be up here doing anything except sitting next to a fire. But we did make it to Bar Harbor and we do want to explore the area. It should be really beautiful. We want to see as much of Maine as possible, but when you only have like five or six hours of usable daylight, it's pretty tough. Oh man, it's pretty brutal. But tomorrow should be sunny, a little bit warmer, so I'm hoping we can take advantage of that and go and do some fun stuff. Yeah. All right, buzz off. We'll see you tomorrow. Well, good morning, y'all. <laughs> good morning. Are you surprised to see us again? Ah, <laughs> we survived. We did it again, another night. <laughs> yeah, it was better than the first night though. I think we had the extra blanket and we kind of like snuggled up a little bit better. <laughs> we knew that we were gonna have enough power so I wasn't all stressed about that, so it was okay. It was okay, it's just really, really hard to get up in the morning. Yeah, it is. Oh, your clothes are frozen. Like we've been taking our clothes and putting them under our heated blanket, <laughs> trying to warm them up. <laughs> you guys know we arrived to our campsite in the dark, but we booked this specifically because it looks amazing in the daylight. The campsite is nestled right on the bank of this lake. It's really serene and super reflective, you know, so it just has like a really cool vibe to it. They said we can still go kayaking. We will probably choose not to. I don't think I could paddle us out yeah. and back. You're not gonna go swimming? <laughs> oh my gosh. All right, channeling the revenant, right? Yeah, he went get in there. A couple times. He did. All right, Leonardo DiCaprio! We have got some delicious Maine specific treats that we've been dying to try. Today I think is gonna be the day. Yes, we're gonna eat some delicious stuff. And then also this area has Maine's only national park yeah. right nearby. So we're gonna go see some pretty stuff today. Yeah, I guess you could say it's their Maine national park. You, guys you know, like the main one. Know how many main jokes he has made since we've gotten to Maine? One of many, many more to come. Oh. Ha ha! Well, we have an interesting development. Our uh, speedometer apparently doesn't work. I don't know if it's frozen <laughs> in place or what, but... Uh, yeah, our I'm, blinker went out as well. Gotta love an old vintage vehicle. <laughs> Always keeping you on your toes and potentially getting you thrown in jail because you're doing 55 and a 35. made it to the adorable little town of Bar Harbor, which actually sits on its own island. And what's so special about it is that it shares the island with Acadia National Park, which is the real reason why we came here. Although Bar Harbor is super adorable, it sits surrounded by water, just nestled into the coastline. You know, tons of like lobster boats and things, but we're a little off season right now. So it's really cold. Lots of things are very closed, but we did manage to find one place to get breakfast and <laughs> a very special treat. So Maine actually has a state dessert, which is blueberry pie, but I think they're the only state that has a state treat, and that is yeah. the whoopie pie, baby. <laughs> Look at this. <laughs> I've never eaten anything like this. It's so heavy and so thick and dense. So typically you get chocolate and cream. I think that's like the default, most popular way to get it, but they didn't have that here. They had all sorts of other flavors, and this seemed really appropriate. It's pumpkin and chocolate chip with a bunch of little cream inside there. What do, you, what do you do? You just take a giant bite of it? Look the size of your head. Oh my god. Oh, whoopee. <laughs> Are you supposed to say whoopee when you eat it? <laughs> that is no joke. Just pure decadence and deliciousness. <laughs> 
It tastes like super sweet, delicious, fluffy pumpkin bread. The cream is just like classic, almost vanilla-y type of cream. So it's served nice and cold, and it's a, kind of a little bit spongy in there, but it is just chock full of friggin' flavor. Oh my gosh. Oh. You've eaten half of it, my this, turn. This is gonna kill me. <laughs> All right, you can have the rest. <laughs> okay, we're gonna scarf this puppy down, finish off our coffee, get all warm and good feeling before we go brave the cold to Acadia National Park. Well, we finally made it into the park. Y'all, Northeast is not letting us down again. This is absolutely stunning. I feel like ever since we got into New York State, Vermont, New Hampshire, it's just been incredible wilderness. And these woods in particular are really neat. Even though all the leaves are gone, all the bark on the trees is kind of white. And then the ground is still kind of orangey. So it looks really mysterious and magical out here. It's really cool. This trail must get brutal in the winter. I'm assuming the whole thing is covered in ice like this. But man, this is some of the coolest ice e ever. Underneath it, there's water just like trickling down. It looks like little bugs crawling under it or something. What'd you say? It looks like Plinko? It looks like nature Plinko. Plinko's that uh, game from The Price is Right, in case you don't know. The oh, best game. Which we were on, by the way. We were on The Price is Right. <laughs> That's right, we didn't get picked to go up, but we were in the audience. That was a long time ago. <laughs> Bonus points if you've ever seen that video. <laughs> it might be. Whoa! Holy cow, that's a lot more slick than I thought. This is the bubble. So it's this large bubble-like boulder that's perfectly sat on the edge of a cliff. It looks like at any moment the wind's just gonna knock it right off of there. But believe it or not, this boulder has been here for a very long time and it, it actually came from about 30 miles northwest and a glacier moved it down here and deposited it right here. Right there and it has never fallen down this cliffside. One day it Until will. today. I know, I was about to say, should we go push it? <laughs> the minute that you stand under it, that's when it happens. <laughs> so they say people always try to push it off and it's never broken or fallen. Do I dare? Uh, sure, that? go for it. What if I'm the one person? I mean, that would be spectacular. Give it a nice push. Come on, put your muscle into it. It really looks like a few people could push that over. It's crazy. It really does, okay. Not working. <laughs> okay, I'm done. E for effort. <laughs> at the southeastern part of Acadia National Park right now. And we came to see the uh, Thunder Hole. <laughs> Any guesses what that is? <laughs> no, it's actually this cool cove that water kind of swishes around and splashes all over these rocks over here. We came at a time where the water is not splashing, which is good or bad depending on how you look at it. The bad side is I can't get all this cool slow motion footage of all these epic wave splashes. The plus side is we don't get wet, <laughs> right? But worth coming to anyway for the sunset. I mean, look at it. It's like an incredible glow. The sun's actually setting way over there, but it's casting this incredible glow just on all the islands and the water and the clouds. It's pretty cool. You did it. Nice That's job, all. Dude. <laughs> Cut. Are you thinking you could make it across? <laughs> you could definitely make it across. Yeah. Could you make it back? I was about to say the fear of coming back would cripple me and I'd have to live there. Yeah. You know, someone has done it though, for sure. Oh, I don't yeah. have the guts. <laughs> Ooh, it's turning my stomach thinking about it. But anyways, you guys, this has been like one of the top sunsets. I mean, look at this color over here. Is that crazy or what? It's chilly, but it's beautiful. Mix up for it. town of Bar Harbor. We've been driving around and we've been noticing that all of these little seaside villages really remind us of the UK. 
And so we found the perfect little Irish pub. And you know it's Irish because they have Guinness signs everywhere. It has the vibes of the Irish pub, you know? It's cold outside, it's warm in here. You've got the nice glow of the fire. We've just been so cold all day, you guys, but we are finally maybe thawing out. I can feel my fingers again. I haven't thawed out yet. My hands are still no, cold. Oh yeah. no. Great. Yours are kind of too. I don't know what warm is anymore. I've been cold Put for so long. Put your fingers in the fire. <laughs> what are you doing? But we are not in Ireland. We are in Maine. And that means we gotta eat something else that Maine is known for. Ooh. Can you guess be? what it is? This beautiful dish is a Maine lobster roll, baby. And you will find this at so many places along the coast here in Maine because this is what they specialize in. Freaking fresh lobsters, fresh as it gets. But it's a pretty penny for this dish. We debated whether or not we should even try it. It's $35. Uh, 37 with the fries. $37 for this. I mean, I know lobster is expensive, but holy cow. But they take this nice little bun, they toast it up, they cut it down the middle, and then they stuff it full of delicious lobster. This one, they have kind of a mayo-y sauce that they mix in with there. It smells a little lemony, so it's definitely got some lemon in there somewhere. Here comes the choo-choo train. To be honest, I don't know if... Okay, cut, you didn't see that. To be honest, I don't know if any like roll sandwich like this is worth $37, but it is absolutely fantastically delicious. It's got that lemon zest on there. It's super creamy. The lobster is just so fresh and flavorful tasting. The bun is crunchy, toasted, buttery. And then they, they put these little granules of like coarse, thick salt on there. So you get the crunch of that and the burst of like saltiness. It is a delicious, delicious lobster roll. Do we have to share it? <laughs> you eat the fries. How about that? You have the fries, I have the lobster roll. That might be the rudest thing you have ever said to me. All right, whatever, fine, have your lobster. Look what we stumbled upon, y'all. It's like a graveyard for old VW Westphalias. <laughs> How sweet. Little Lucy fits in real nice here. Oh, yeah. <laughs> some of these are so freaking quirky and some of them have seen better days. Holy cow. Dude, they're all so adorable though. I really love this white one. That one's incredible. I like this two-tone orange. Oh yeah. Oh man. Should we get one for ourselves? Dude, we gotta get that four by four one over there. How about that? <laughs> oh my gosh. Then winter come at us. We'll be zipping all around, woohoo! Holy cow, just a wall of snow just hit us right when we got into Portland. <laughs> oh my gosh, y'all, this is like being trapped in a snow globe, whoa. Yeah, hopefully you guys can hear us right now. There's a lot of wind noise. So <laughs> Sorry windy. about it. It's blowing this thing all around like a log on wheels. <laughs> I know, this is like a little Tootsie Pop on wheels and the wind just like to roll it everywhere. Not a Tootsie Pop, a Tootsie Roll. Tootsie Roll. That's what she and said earlier. It's a Tootsie Roll with wheels on it. <laughs> That's what it looks like to me. But anyways, we had an awesome time exploring what little parts of Maine that we could. Um, but man, it is getting freaking cold, you guys. And uh, our rental is over with this van. We only had it for a few nights. It was a fun experiment. And we will definitely be renting more of these in the future, just in more Southern, warmer climates, yeah, I definitely. think. I think we really miss the vintage vehicles, you know? That's and uh, while we love our Black Series, our intent was never to just be traveling in that thing indefinitely. Um, so this was a nice little getaway, you know, getting back into the quirkiness of the vintage vehicle. Really, it's just a lot harder. <laughs> <laughs> it is, but it makes it so much more worth it when you can pull things off. Speaking of vintage vehicles, we got quite the update from our mechanic on Clementine's progress. And we're going to share that update with you guys pretty soon. <laughs> so stay tuned for that. Yeah, I'm sure you're wondering as well as us, what the heck's going on with her? Right, little Lucy, you treated us well. We'll miss you. Yeah. Aw, goodbye adventures. We'll see you on the road.